Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So let's close our eyes for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that you'll speak to us this morning from your word, and your word will edify us, and your word will cultivate the destinies that you have for us, Father. Lord, that you will speak to each and every one of us on an individual basis. And Lord, let the word, Lord, be rooted in us and help us to act out on the word that you've released for today, Father. Father, we worship you. Worship you, God. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. And everybody say, Amen, amen and Amen. All right, so uh, we have uh, officially completed on the book of Acts. I think last week, Brother Emmanuel did a wonderful completion to that. And then for the next few Sundays, okay, the preachers here will be taking turns to talk to us about the various Christian disciplines. All right? So we have fasting, we have prayer, we have worship, we have uh, the Word of God. So we believe that these Christian disciplines, though they sound very basic, they are actually deeper levels in them when you go and really study them in depth. So we pray that, you know, as a church, we will indulge in more of these Christian disciplines, you know, and get ourselves closer to God as a church. And today, I'm going to touch on the topic of fasting. Amen? Fasting. Today is Rosh Hashanah. And I think some of the Jews in Israel will be fasting. And fasting is something that probably has been forgotten by the church for ages. We are very much more focused on the other aspects of the Christian discipline. But fasting is something that I don't really see Christians or, or even the godly ones, they don't really fast as much as we do, as we are supposed to do. So let me quickly move on to my overview for today. So today, I'll be covering, number one, what is fasting? Number two, the history of fasting. Number three, the results of fasting. Number four, factors involved in fasting. Okay, uh, number five, how do we fast? Right, along the way, I'll share with you on some of the handles on how to fast. All right, and I think many of us would have heard much about fasting. So, as we are moving forward, may the Holy Spirit convict us one more time to really seek God through fasting. Now, what is fasting? Let me share with you a quote from Wesley Dewell. It is voluntarily choosing to abstain from food because your spiritual hunger is so deep, your determination in intercession is so intense or your spiritual warfare is so demanding that you have to set aside even fleshly needs to give yourself wholly to prayer and meditation on God's word. Point number one, what is fasting? It is one way to humble ourselves before God to display our dependency on God. It is saying, God, I need you so much. I'm so desperate. It is one way to show our desperation in seeking God and His will for our lives. There are three different levels of fasting on a personal level. Number two, on a corporate level as a church. Number three, on a national level. If you want another one, would be at a global level. Amen? And David says in Psalms 69 verse 10, he humbled his soul with fasting. Now, fasting is willingly abstaining from food for spiritual reasons and not just for other reasons. Now, I got to emphasize this because we do not fast just for the sake of losing weight. We don't fast because we want to detoxify our body. All these are the natural results of fasting. We praise God for that, that the benefits of fasting. But for Christians, for our faith, we fast to seek God. We are so desperate to seek God. We want Him so much that we set aside our food to seek Him. 
And especially for we Singaporeans and all those who are in Singapore, we are foodies. Don't praise God for that, huh? I mean, I'm also guilty of that. My favorite sinful food is biryani. It's the healthiest food that you can ever eat in Singapore. All right? You see, Singaporeans are so used to eating so much of food that we don't know that food is actually a cause of all the diseases that are coming up. I read an article, and this article, this, this particular man, he was saying that food is related to many of the diseases. It's just that we don't know that food is causing a lot of diseases. And a lot of food that we eat today is unprocessed, I mean, sorry, processed food. It's not really that organic food. I'm not promoting organic food, but I'm just saying that, you know, eating processed food, too much of it can actually cause a lot of health conditions. Now, I'm not a medical doctor. We can go to Dr. Lai at the back. You can ask him after the surveys what are the medical conditions and, and so on and so forth. But I'm just sharing with you what I researched and what I studied. And you know, one thing about our food, right? Do you know the food that we eat stays in our stomach and stays in our intestines for about seven months, one year? So not all the food that you eat is actually fully digested. This is medically proven. I'm not sharing with you something. I read from some, I mean, some other source that is not credible. So what happens is that as you are eating a lot of new food, so the digestive juices that is coming out, spoke the preacher in me. At the moment I get the mic, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Samuel. So the moment we are eating all those new food, right, what happens is that our digestive juices will digest much of the new food and there's still some old food stuck at the lining of your stomach and at the sides of your colon. And what happens if you don't fast, if you don't, if you keep eating, keep eating, eat and eat and eat, 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 eat uh, you keep eating, then what happens is that over time, and that's what really causes you stomach cancer, intestine cancer, colon cancer, whatever you can call it. So you are eating your disease. You're eating your way to a disease. Even, even those dogs, you know, if they are sick, they won't, they won't eat about for about a few days. So fasting is something that we humans naturally do. Or naturally, when we are sick, we choose not to eat, right? You don't feel like eating because that is a mechanism of the body for you to recover and it is given by God. Amen? Right? So it is one way to humble ourselves before God to display our dependency on God. It is a way to humble your soul, your mind, your will and the emotions. And the second, what is fasting? It is a way to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Now remember the body that we have doesn't belong to us anymore because Jesus had paid the price for the body. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, so it is utterly important to be very careful of what we eat. And one way to be very careful of what we eat is to fast and pray and, to, and seek God. Andrew Murray said this, Fasting helps to express, deepens, confirms the resolution that we are ready to sacrifice anything, even ourselves, to attain what we seek for the kingdom of God. Let me move on to the history of fasting. Now, as you know, fasting is something that not only Christians do. It is practiced by many world religions, especially uh, the religion that I came from. You know, I came from Islam and I used to fast 30 days. And our fast is that we will wake up, you know, that time, 5 a.m. I think Brother Emmanuel can uh, resound, resonate with me. So we'll uh, wake up at 5 a.m., we'll eat then we will fast the whole day, no food, no water. Then in the evening, we will whack all kinds of food. <laughs> all right? So that's, that was what we are doing. And there was a reason for that. And it is even practiced by even some famous circular people. Now, how many of you know uh, the uh, Pythagoras theorem in mathematics? 
Okay, it's, uh, it's only me and Emmanuel. Oh God. Okay, Pythagoras theorem is actually a theorem to find the uh, the different length of the sides of a right angle triangle. If you don't understand, I'm so sorry about it. Okay, so this philosopher Pythagoras actually is a man who fasts. He's a mathematician. So by fasting, he actually improved his mental perception and creativity. And then we have another guy called Hippocrates, not Hippocrates. <laughs> Hippocrates, he's uh, it's, it's a father of medicine, the Greek father of medicine. He used fasting as a me medical means of restoring health. Now, why am I saying this? What's got circular guys fasting got to do with our faith? If the circular guys are fasting, how much more should the church fast when we know the real power of fasting? Because our fasting is not just giving you, you know, physical benefits, it's giving you spiritual benefits. Amen? And it's practiced by many biblical characters for various reasons. Eh? Well, number one, Moses fasted to receive the law. In Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 9 to 18, no need to display those scriptures. I'm going to run through this. David fasted for his child to be healed. Ezra fasted and moaned over the sin of Israel. Number four, Esther fasted for the safety of the Jews. Number five, Darius fasted for the safety of Daniel. You know, when Daniel was put into the den of lions, you know, King Darius fasted. And Daniel fasted to receive answers for his prayers. And Jesus fasted before his temptation by the devil. And Paul fasted after his conversion. You know, at, his, at, at, the, at Damascus, remember, he was three days. He set himself aside because he was blind. And he was blind and he was fasting during that point of time. And lastly, church elders fasted in Antioch before sending out missionaries. Amen. So many of the biblical characters that we see actually fasted. So that's why the Bible says, when you fast and not if you fast. Fasting is something that all Christians ought to do. Whatever fasting that you're comfortable with now, that part, I will come to that later. Amen. Now the preaching begins. Are you ready? Amen. Number three, the results of fasting. Number one, I mean, part A, okay, number three, okay, because under my overview is the third thing. A, or the first point, fasting increases our spiritual weight and not our spiritual worth. Now, when you fast, what happens is that fasting is actually a form of waiting on God. You know, different ways of, wait, of waiting on God, right? One way that I practice a lot is to wait on God through the Word of God. Another way, you just be silent, still your soul, you wait on God. Fasting is a very good way to actually still yourself. And when you fast, you find yourself more still, more calm. You have a bit more focus than your usual prayer times. Amen? So that's why we should fast. And there is an increased awareness of His presence. You know, when you are fasting, you are able to hear God much more clearly than you are hearing God in the normal, you're doing your normal prayer times. It will be so clear because your body is at rest, your digestive system is no more focused on digesting the food, but every part of your body is just so submitted to seek and focus on the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen? And your sensitivity increases towards the spiritual realm. And this is the time where your revelation will increase. There will be more visions, there will be more dreams, there will be more encounters. Amen. So for those of you who always say that, you know, you can't hear God clearly, is a good way to start with fasting. Fast, I will tell you how to do it at the end of the whole sermon. Is that Okay. And your fasting does not increase your spiritual worth. Uh, this one is a very important thing I need to address. You know why? doesn't mean that you're fasting for 40 days, you are some spiritual jumbo. I've seen people fasting for 40 days and yet still so weak in the spirit, 
Now, I'm not talking about those people who are really trying their best and seeking God for deliverance and all those stuff. I'm talking about prideful people. We will kill your pride in JMK. If you ever come to JMK, you know, blabbering about how much you fast and how much you pray. Simply because the number of days you fast does not determine or correspond to your spiritual maturity. It doesn't mean you fast for 40 days, you're so spiritually matured. It's just that there's more spiritual weight added to you to seek God and walk with God in a more accurate alignment with Him. And fasting opens the doorway for you to really seek the will of God and know what is really God saying, what is really God wanting for my life. That's point number one. Number two, fasting brings forth miraculous victories over the enemy. You know, I believe you have known the story from Second Chronicles, King Jehoshaphat. Amen. In the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 20, verses 1 to 3, so let me read this for you. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites, and with them, some of the Munites, came against Jehoshaphat for battle. And some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you from Edom, from beyond the sea. And behold, they are in Hezazon Tamar, that is Engedi. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. From all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. So you see, again, the emphasis of fasting is not to get this from God, get my blessings from God, get my housing from God, get my miracle from God. The main point of fasting is to seek Jesus. We are not waiting for a miracle, we are waiting for Him. It is very important to set our motives right before we fast. If not, you'll be fasting for things and not fasting for Him. If you wait for Him, if you fast to seek Him, He will give you all the things that you need. That doesn't mean you do not need to fast for housing. Sometimes certain areas of our life, we need to ask for God's direction. And it may be a blockage for our destiny. Or for example, if you don't marry the right person, what will happen? Your destiny might be affected. So that is something you seek God for. You don't walk past a oh God, uh, uh, who should I marry? Uh, uh, this girl. Uh. Uh, there is not uh, something casual that you ask when you're walking by, your, by the streets of Bukit Bato or your own streets. You know. It's something that is so important. You got to sit down and seek God's will and fast and ask God. Seeking God. And here, King Jehoshaphat, instead of depending on his own ability, now remember he's a king. He knows how to fight men. He has probably fought many battles. And I'm wondering here, this, this king, I love him so much, because this guy, instead of depending on his abilities, he depends on the abilities of God. So fasting is depending on the abilities of God. And what happens, he doesn't just fast all alone. He gathers along his army. That's a, what a weird king, you know, in the history. Instead of gathering his army for battle, with the weapons, with the armor, with all the different tactics and strategies, he is gathering his army to fast. And you will see in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12, O our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. By fasting, you are telling God, God, I am powerless. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. When you do not know what to do, fast. Let your eyes be on Him, the focus. Again, it's coming back, being focused on God when we are fasting. And Second Chronicles chapter 20, after they fasted, after they prayed, amen, and this is what happened. And when they, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 22 to 23, and when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so that they were routed. 
For the men of Ammon and Moab rose against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, devoting them to destruction. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they all helped to destroy one another. And somebody say, Amen. Amen. When they fasted and prayed and praised God, God gave them a miraculous victory from their enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me share with you a personal testimony of how the Holy Spirit told me to fast seven days. At that time, I was engaged with uh, another girl. Thank God my wife is not here. <laughs> she can't hear this, so I can say a lot of things during sermon. <laughs> so I was engaged with another girl just before I married my wife. And we had all our engagement album done. I, she put on her ring on me. I put my ring on her. Everything was done. There was one month for the marriage to happen. And just before this marriage came, this marriage came to an abrupt end. One day, the Holy Spirit told me, it was the last seven days of that relationship with that girl. The Holy Spirit suddenly told me, fast for seven days. Now, let me clarify what I mean by fast for seven days. In my context, fast for seven days evenings. Because I was working full time, I cannot fast throughout the whole day. I had to come back home and I had to skip, I'll usually skip that meal, seek God. So I was seeking God for that seven days. And seven days, I was so intensely praying and speaking in tongues and worshipping God. It was not the normal kind of, you know, surface level. Just praying and and just uh, seeking God for a... I don't know why I'm praying so intensely, but I'm just praying and meditating on God's Word. And came the seventh day. I was here because it was my first year in GMK. I was seated here. Now, those of you here, huh, be careful. Huh? <laughs> on that seventh day, when I was worshipping, I couldn't worship. And I think Pastor James was leading worship. It's not Pastor James' fault, so it's not him. It's my fault. I just couldn't worship because I was so troubled. I was fasting and praying. I was so troubled in my heart that something negative is really going to happen to me. Something very big is going to happen to me that is going to affect me very badly. And when I went back after church, and in fact, I think, I don't know, yeah. In fact, when I went back after church, I received a call from the girl's mother. You know, we are cancelling the wedding. And I was so heartbroken because it was so uh, precious to me. Uh, they just, we arranged all the tickets, the, the, the flight tickets, the hall, everything booked. But about $5,000 just lost, just like that. And they are not even willing to pay back this, those, those money. We forgave them, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, it's all forgiven. But what I'm saying is that the Lord broke something on that day when I fasted and prayed according to his instructions. And what I didn't know was this, that marriage was actually a snare, a trap for me. Because if I had married that girl, the girl's mother demanded me to go and live in India, to leave all my ministry, whatsoever, I have to go and live in India. And I was also so foolish, blinded by love, I said, I will do anything for the girl. No. <laughs> so foolish. How foolish am I, Lord? And how gracious God has been. How gracious God has been. And God broke the plans of the enemy in that fast. I didn't even know that. But because I heard the voice of God and He told me to do it, I did it. I got no idea. I just chose to obey God. And God, gave me a miraculous victory over the enemy. And today, I'm standing before you. Amen? So that's why when you fast and pray, God will fight for you. You don't need to fight. You look at King Jehoshaphat. That guy was just singing and praising God. Oh, every time I, I face an, uh, a storm, like what our brother said last week, he spoke about storm. You know, God will not hide his face from his storms, from the storms that we face. Every time a, a challenge comes to me, immediately my mouth will just praise God. Hallelujah. 
So fast and pray, and God will give you the miraculous victories over the enemy. You know, you can be complaining, you can be murmuring over your situation, over your storm, you know. You can be saying, God, why is this happening? Why is this challenge happening? Or else, you can go into the prayer room like a warrior fasting and ripakata, rekato boshe, or rakabakate, or retokabe. And you can kill the enemy when you fast and pray. Hallelujah. Oh, God is powerful. Our God is powerful. And for my marriage with my current wife, I only got one wife, praise God for that. (laughs) I'm not going to think about another one. If I think about another one, all the fathers of the house, please come and correct me. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So, so what happened is that the current marriage, that pastor and his wife was arranging for us and they had to fast for three months because it was just a whole spiritual battle, man. When I was married, I remember I was coughing in my, in my, I mean, uh, I mean in my registration in, in India. I was coughing. <laughs> I was like the only guy probably coughing in my own wedding, you know. And I was coughing throughout the trip. I had diarrhea. I had so much of spiritual attacks. I'm not glorifying it. But I'm just saying God saved me from so much of things. Amen. And God is so good. And let me move on to the next point. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Number three, fasting helps us to receive guidance from God and make decisions. Nehemiah fasted for four months before building a major building project. The wall, right? He had to build a wall surrounding Jerusalem. Now what we will do, we will discuss for four months. We will not fast. That's the problem with some of the Singapore churches. I'm not against Singapore church. I love them. They have done so much of things, but I think some of the things we lack is, one of the things is fasting. We discuss so much. We plan so much. But look at Nehemiah, you know. Is, did he do all the necessary things, the, the planning to do, to build up the wall? Yes, he did. But what he did more was fasting and seeking God. Your intensity in seeking God through fasting must be greater than the deeds that you're going to do. Because this is God's work. This is God's life that He has given to you. You are no more living your own life. You are living the life God has given you. And therefore, it is mandatory for us, it is essential for us to seek God through fasting or for guidance when we need so. Amen. And Daniel, in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 3, Then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking Him by prayer, and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And Daniel, chapter 9, verses 21 to 22, While I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the first, came to me in swift flight at the time of the evening sacrifice, He made me understand, speaking with me and saying, Oh, Daniel, I have now come out to give you insight and understanding. Insight and understanding, my dear people of God, is critical in making decisions, especially when some of our decision making has a direct impact on our destiny. You know, things like marriage, Things like what job you should go to. What is the degree that you should go to. Now, don't just I go by faith. Don't just go by faith when it comes to this kind of things. Fast and pray. And ask God for yourself. For those who are seeking marriage partners, ask God. For those who are facing a challenge, ask God for guidance. Because God will give you specific instructions that may hold the key for your breakthrough. Remember? You know the guy who was blind? Jesus could have just healed him on the spot. But he told him, you know, go and wash the mud on your eyes. And the 
place where he needs to wash the mud is quite far. No? How is he going to blind all the way, go all the way to the river? But sometimes God gives you that kind of a key which you don't understand during fasting and he will give you the breakthrough at the end of your fasting. And in, in biblical, in, in, in the Bible, we have seen so many of them there. Amen? And next, fasting helps us to overcome temptations and sinful habits. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Now, this scripture says that Jesus fasted just before he faced a temptation from the enemy. Amen? And he is not meeting some Jezebel. He is meeting Lucifer himself. And that is the reason why he had to fast 40 days without food. Now, how do I know Jesus did take water? Uh, this is debatable, I could say, okay? Because Matthew chapter 4, verse 2 says he was hungry. It didn't say he was thirsty. Okay, don't debate with me whether he, has, he ate food or he didn't eat food. But at the, the point that I'm trying to bring in is that he fasted for a reason because a temptation is coming his way and he needed that strength in his spirit man to overcome the devil. If Jesus fasted, I don't understand why some Christians don't want to fast. And yet you are always complaining that I can't, can't overcome this, can't overcome that. And this is the key that you got to take note of. Amen? And even in the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 6 to 10, the word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and set his ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, that neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let men and beasts be covered with sackcloth, and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger, so that we may not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from the evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. Amen. You know, for those of you who are struggling with those sinful habits, you're having constant temptations, lust, the temptation to keep eating food. It's a temptation as well, no? That's a temptation that Singaporeans do like. <laughs> we have a temptation to eat food. Now, don't think, let us not think that only young people are going through this. Many adults are going through their inner battles within them. They are fighting the demons within themselves. It's just that sometimes they don't have someone to share. So if we are facing that kind of battles, temptations, something that is pulling towards a sinful lifestyle, then fast and pray. Fast and pray and ask God to break that habit. Because it is proven that fasting, by, and you are, when you are seeking God through fasting, those bondages will be broken. Amen? And these people in Nineveh, they fasted. You know, I don't know whether these people in Nineveh, I don't think they know God, no. But God is so full of wisdom. You know why? The people of Nineveh, their God, their God is actually a combination of fish and men. The God they worship is a combination of fish and men. So when Jonah was swallowed by a fish and he was, you know, spitted out by the fish, right? He was vomited out by the fish. And the people there probably saw this man. Wow, he is coming out of the fish. He's probably from God. And that's the reason why they listened to him when he said, God is going to judge you. And through that, God brought a mass repentance. The whole nation repented and he did not bring upon them the judgment that he supposed to. So when you fast, the judgments or the consequences that is supposed to come upon you, 
at times can be averted. Amen? So I'm moving on to the next part. What are the factors involved in fasting? Now, I'm going to be a bit more, give a bit more practical advice, practical suggestions, handles for us to start fasting or increase your level of fasting. Okay? So, number one, we have the type of fast. So, one of the factors involved in fasting is the type of fast. Can we have that slide, please? The slide on the type of fast. Okay, so here I have uh, actually written five kinds of fast. Number one, we have the normal fast where you don't eat any food, water only. And then we have this Absolute fast, number two. In this absolute fast, there's absolutely no food or water. Now, when you do this kind of fast, you get to be careful. Do not take more than three days unless the Lord tells you so. We do not want to pray for you in the hospital. Alright? So let's be wise. If you have never fasted before, you suddenly shock your body by not eating and drinking for three days, you're going to get some consequences in your body. Alright? So that's your absolute fast. Number three, we have the partial fast. Now, partial fast is you could fast certain meals of the day or abstain from certain kinds of food. Meaning, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 3, Daniel ate no pleasant bread. He decided to eat no pleasant food. Alright, so you can kind of don't eat meat at all, a vegetarian fast. Or you can don't eat anything that is tasty. Buy all the things that you don't like. <laughs> yeah, last time uh, I was working in a student care. And uh, this is the best place to do vegetarian fasting. Because the auntie cooks in a way, <laughs> you will definitely hit the food that's before you. And then, and thank God that helped in my fasting. When I was fasting, I was like, thank you God for that auntie <laughs> who cooks such wonderful, tasteless food. <laughs> uh, the auntie is a nice auntie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I shared the gospel with her. I prayed for her in the, in the student care center. She's a nice auntie. The auntie certainly won't be watching this. <laughs> so that's why I'm so confidently sharing about her. Thank you, auntie. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so you can choose to let go of uh, certain... So, for example, sometimes I take all those digestive biscuits, you know. Uh, yesterday, Jacob was asking me, what do you eat for dinner? Uh, I eat Milo and biscuit. Huh? Milo and biscuit? Are you sure, Brother Matthew? Yeah, sometimes I think uh, eating in this way has actually helped me overcome my gastric, you know. When I fasted, I realize I don't have gastric issues. So those who have gastric issues, F-A-S-T, fast. Stop eating all the junk food. McDonald's, Burger King. You definitely won't be a king at the end of the day. All right, okay. So then we have the juice fast. So some of them, they, have, they only consume fruit and vegetable juices. Then we have the corporate fast. So we fast as a church. Okay, so I think we have done one during the, on the 8th of August. All right, so probably we can do more. And our seven days fasting is coming soon, right? In the month of January. Okay, in fact, it's not seven days. It has become eight days. Thank God for that. Amen. Okay, so let me move on to the duration of fast. So all these, the next few points, I don't have slides. For the duration of fast, okay, according to the Bible, the numbers that pops up is 3 days, 7 days, 21 days, 40 days. So it really depends on what you're fasting for and what the Lord tells you. If you're really not fasting for something very serious, you don't need to fast for 40 days. I once uh, wanted to fast for 30 days, vegetarian fast. Then Pastor Stephen came to my house. Because at that time, I had to preach in the Tamil service. So I fast. 
Now, I'm not boasting about fasting. Huh? There's nothing to boast about fasting. Okay? Alright, so I was fasting. Then I just completed two days. Then Pastor Stephen came to me. Then he asked me, uh, why are you fasting? Oh no, because I have this preaching. Uh, because I have to... There was another preaching that we, we had to do that time with our, among our brothers. Then he told me, but you don't need to fast for 30 days. Well, you're going to drive out demons. Huh? Then I realized that, you know, don't fast unnecessarily when the Lord did not tell you to fast. Because if you fast when the Lord did not tell you to fast, especially for the longer ones, your flesh will take over and you will not grow spiritually in the sense, you will instead display pride. And I've seen this in some people. They display pride and they get false visions, false dreams, false encounters. And they say the hand is coming out from the cloud. The hand is going up to the cloud. I don't know what cloud they are seeing. I'm not against all these encounters and I we value true encounters, but this kind of prideful talk, I just hate it. And I'll just kill it. Amen? Alright, so depends on what you're fasting for and what the love tells you. Number three, okay, the third factor, okay, be aware of the intervals between fasting, okay? If you have gone for a three days fasting, if you're just new to that fasting, don't immediately after another three days, another go to another seven days fasting. Be careful, okay? Don't shock your body unnecessarily, okay? Then number four, your overall health status is important. Because some of us have health conditions, okay? Some of us, you know, if you're pregnant or if you're having some health issues, you may choose to do a partial fast, skip a meal, or maybe go on a vegetarian diet, all right? I think many of us need to go on a vegetarian diet because in Singapore, there's too many meaty stuff, right? You agree? All right. Then next, your age, okay? Can young children fast? Of course. Even Brother Sadhu encourage young children to fast. They can fast like, you know, don't eat all those tasty food. Don't eat sweets. Don't eat chocolates. Alright? And they can do fast in many other different ways. I'm just giving you a glimpse of it because I'm not, I really don't have time to really go through everything. Alright? Okay? Now, coming to how do we fast? Wow. I am so proud of myself. You know why? I am almost finishing soon. <laughs> and all of you like, after many weeks of one and a half hours, can I get a break this week, please? No. Amen. That's the spirit. So, the one who is preaching next Sunday, huh? please take note of it. Preach more. Preach longer. So, how do we fast? First of all, Decide on the type of fast and the duration of fast. And during your fasting, okay, don't do this, huh? Wash your plate, then you are still... Don't do that. Try not to do that. I know, some, I know sometimes some of our mothers I've seen, you know, they're really busy, they really don't have that time, but try not to do it. Set aside that time, consecrate that time. God will honor that time and bless that time, and He will multiply that time you lost back to you. There was once I woke up in the morning, I was supposed to go and pray. So usually I'll wake up, wake up, brush my teeth, I'll pray. Okay, then what happened is that that day, uh, I think it happened during the seven days fasting prayer. I went in the morning, I had some dishes to wash, you know. I just was washing. Then I felt the Holy Spirit pulling my spirit man to come and spend time with Him. It's like the Holy Spirit was telling me, see, these things can be done later. Why don't you set aside these things and come and do it? And come and spend time with me. And He was saying it in a way whereby He's yearning to spend time with me. I was like, wow. God, I'm going to leave these things and come and spend time with you. And it was a wonderful time in His presence. I was just enjoying His presence. I was so fascinated that the Holy Spirit wants me so much and so does He wants you so much in His presence. So set aside that time. During a time of fast, spend more time in worship, in prayer, and in word. It can be a fast 
focus. Okay, you can probably, it can be a worship fast, where you're worshipping God throughout your fast. It can be a word fast, where you're studying the Word of God intensively. Or it can be a prayer fast, where you are just praying and interceding and, and seeking God for certain things in your life. Or it can be a combination of these things. Amen. And remember, during your fast, make this thing very clear. God, I want to hear you during this fast. It cannot be just a one-way thing. You're just fasting, fasting, praying, praying, worshipping, worshipping, reading, reading. God is not talking to you anything. So all this while, you have just successfully talked to yourself for three hours. So it is important, church, that when we fast, ask God to speak. I cannot hear God. You know, some people say that. You will hear God. Trust in the ability of God to speak rather than the ability for you to hear. Trust in his, his ability to speak to you more than your ability to hear God. Because sometimes we are so uh, confident in our ability to hear God that we become prideful and that's where at a certain stage pro false prophecies will come out. God said, thus says the Lord. A lot of people are going around with that. And if that people come to me, they will get rebuked for all the false words that they are saying, I think they need a rebuke. What do you think? Some of you are like, rebuke, no. La. I'm a nice guy. La. Actually, I'm a nice guy too. I don't do that often. It's with certain people, la, I'll, I'll rebuke them for them to grow. Okay? All right. Then, establish routines of fasting on a weekly, on a monthly basis to train your body to adapt to the fasting regimens. All right? So, as we said, if you have not fasted for a very, very long time, start your fasting slowly. Maybe skip a meal. Now, this is what I practice personally. I'm not trying to impose on you. I'm just going to share. So usually, at the start, when I was fasting, even before my marriage, I used to skip one meal because I was working. So I skipped that meal and I would seek God. So over the years, when I've become too comfortable with that skipping of one meal, okay, what you can do, upgrade your fasting. Don't be too comfortable with your fasting because there's no intensity. There's no intensity. So what I did later, I became, I combined vegetarian fasting with uh, partial fasting. So the whole day I'll be vegetarian. And then on and off, I will switch between uh, not taking, skipping two meals. One day during the seven days fast, I'll skip two meals. The next day, I'll skip one meal. Two meals, one meal. So I'll alternate between it, them so that my body can adapt to that fasting regimen. And over time, you know, you are, your body is able to adapt and you are able to have that focus on that fasting because your alarm clock, you know, in your, in your stomach uh, won't go out, tring, out eat, you know. So it will die off after some time when you train yourself. All right? So, coming to the conclusion. Hallelujah. I'm so proud of myself. Because <laughs> I promise, uh, I mean, not, I promise, Pastor, Pastor, I'm going to just take one hour. Are you learning something? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And I, we just hope that after this, we will truly fast and pray. Because we do not want to hear a nice, good sermon and we just go away not doing anything about it. As we have always spoken, JMK, you are warriors. You need to realize that you're a warrior. And one of the ways to realize is through fasting and prayer. We have a lot of things to contend for in this nation. Especially the LGBTQ issue is rising up. And our young people are sinking into it. And I thank God I went for a meeting yesterday with some of our young people. And many young people are just fired up. They just want to do something about it. But, you see, you cannot be fighting demons with your intellect. It's a big mistake. You cannot fight a demon with your nice arguments. While we need to prepare ourselves intellectually to 
you know, give them an answer for our faith, you need to make sure your spirit man is very strong, especially through fasting. Because this is where your spirit man is strengthened. Because if your spirit man is not strong, then when the opposition comes against you, what happens is that you will succumb to it. This time, you can never, you, you can never you know, fight back with those arguments. Because uh, I'm telling you, Singaporeans or Singapore, we have a lot of intellectual fellows. I have seen some of them in NIE. They are just so intellectual, just so convincing. You cannot really fight them back with just reasons. But bend your knees. Bend your knees, fast and pray, and God will make sure that guy gets saved. It is possible. So it is important that we focus on the spirit man through fasting and prayer and, and strengthen it so much because we need such strength in our spirit for even the end times. Last week when I was sitting with uh, Pastor Barnabas and Auntie Hui Wan, Pastor Stephen has told them, you know, during these end times, you know that there are a lot of food shortages happening in a lot of countries, right? Okay, so what happened is that he was advising or he was giving a suggestion to them that even as there are food shortages and a bigger food shortage is going to come according to the book of Revelation, you need to reduce the amount of food that you eat on a daily basis. Even when you're not fasting, reduce the amount of food that you eat so that your stomach is trained to have a whole lesser food when there is less food available. The food that you need, God will provide. So, I was just thinking, you know, God is so wise because when He instituted fasting, He sees the end from the beginning. He knows that our people, His people, will, there will be a time in history where they will go without food and we need to train them to actually fast, to be without food, to train your stomach to be without food. Is it possible to stay alive without food? Absolutely. Because there's a scripture that says, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, how do you think Moses fasted without food and water for 40 days there? It is not humanly possible, no? It's absolutely not possible. If you go to any medical doctors, you can go to Dr. Lai again. <laughs> Dr. Lai, you're going to have a lot of people coming to you later. You can go to Dr. Lai again, you can ask. There's no way you can survive 40 days without food and water. But in that atmosphere of His glory, that need for food just dissipates, just vanishes. When you're just in the atmosphere of glory, atmosphere of worship, you know, sometimes when we fast, you won't even feel like eating you won't even feel like eating all those nasi biryani, mi goreng la, maggi goreng la, all the goreng. Uh, they, later your stomach also become on goreng. You won't feel like eating seriously because you're so intensively seeking God. So I advise us to seek God on a personal level. Please, if you have not started yet, start from this week onwards. Amen? Okay? All right? You can fast often personally and corporately to increase our spiritual appetite for God and for God to fulfill His purposes for our life personally and corporately. Some of the ways you can fast. You know, there are many times we come together, right? You can fast during the Friday prayer meetings. Skip that meal. If we have SOW, KSA, SOW, KCOP lessons, if we have in the future, and those prophetic conferences you can fast. Okay? You can have fellowship without food. That's a revelation. And say, Amen. Well, very reluctant to say Amen. <laughs> very reluctant to say Amen. Lord, forgive them. And any other spiritual gatherings, even the coming cost of following Jesus, fast. Maybe not for the whole day or at least one meal. Fast. Fast and pray and seek God. Because according to the prophecies given by the prophet of God, we are going to spearhead, spearhead the revival. Now, it's not something that pridefully we are saying, boasting, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. And 
for our church specifically, we are trained very much to fight in the Spirit. So we ought to, a prophetic church is supposed to fast even more than the normal church. So I encourage you, you know, today, have that lifestyle of fasting. Because God wants to use every one of you. If you want more personal advice, maybe you can go and see the pastors and ask them for advice, you know, on how to fast. You know, you have this medical condition. If you want some specifically one-to-one consultation, Pastor Barnabas is available. Now I put him into... (laughs) Thank you, Pastor Barnabas. Pastor James has... He's not here, so he has escaped for this, <laughs> this week. But Pastor James, we'll catch you soon. <laughs> All right? Amen? So, fasting is not just a physical discipline, but a spiritual feast. Amen? Let's close our eyes for a word of prayer, after which I'm going to hand it to Pastor Barnabas. You know, let's look upon the Lord And ask God, Lord, give me the grace to fast. Lord, and give me the ability to fast, O God. Forgive me, Father, that I have not fasted and sought your face all this while. You know, even as we are closing our eyes and focusing on Jesus, I want us to make a commitment with the Lord. And tell him, God, God, maybe I've not fasted all this while. I've been so casual about this aspect of fasting. Lord, could you help me to fast and pray so that I can seek your face? And make a commitment with the Lord. Lord, I will fast for you at least a week on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. Lord, I will set aside the time and consecrate myself before you, Father, because you have great things for this church in the coming days. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, that your hand will come upon us, O God, even for the days that are ahead. Lord, the trying times that are ahead of us. Lord, that through fasting, we'll overcome the enemy in the name of Jesus. We will break every bondages through fasting in the name of Jesus. Would you decide to even not only fast for yourself, but fast for a brother or a sister who's struggling in sin, who's struggling with a challenge. Lord, I will fast for that brother because the church is able to or should be able to fast for someone who is not able to fast due to some medical conditions. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for speaking to us about the importance of fasting. Father, we pray, God, Lord, that even as we fast, there will be breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that even as we fast, Lord, those who are not able to hear God clearly Father, that your voice will be clearly heard by them in the name of Jesus. Open their ears in the name of Jesus. Open their spiritual ears to see, to hear. Lord, give them dreams, O God. Speak to them through dreams during these times of fast. Give them encounters, Father, that will just change their lives forever in the name of Jesus. Father, we even pray, God, for our brother and sister who are struggling with addictions. We pray for the young people and the old God. We are struck, who are struggling with temptations and addictions, Father. And Lord, whatever the enemy is bringing against them, we come against it in the name of Jesus. The name that is above every other name, Father. The name that has no rival. The name that has no equal. We break the power of the enemy. Let them be set free in the name of Jesus from these addictions, Father. Let them be set free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God.